Hello fellow hams, it's Alex here, uh, Victor Kilo 2, Papa Radio Charlie, over here in Australia. For those people familiar with my YouTube channel, a couple of the videos that I have up on the channel um, relate to half-wave end-fed vertical for 20 metres. So let's just go over again quickly how this particular antenna works and what are the advantages of it. Okay, so you've got yourself a half-wave antenna, which happens to be in a vicinity of 9.8 metres tall. Okay, it's matched using a matching coupler that matches the very, very high input impedance of a, a, of a half-wave end-fed antenna to the 50 ohms of your transmission line. But these types of antennas uh, develop quite a lot of common mode currents and they need to be dispersed. So we use, for want of a better word, a counterpoise or an element to take care of the radiated uh, common mode currents, okay? These particular elements are, are not very important in, in their specific length, long as they're long enough to take care of the common mode current. So if you're using QRP, it doesn't have to be very long at all, maybe a metre. But if you're using 400 watts, you might find 10 metres is required to get rid of the common mode currents. Advantages of the 20 metre half-wave in-fed vertical are very, very low angle of radiation, which makes them ideal and they're not ground dependent. So very, very good antenna for uh, portable operations. I use a squid pole or a fiberglass telescopic pole and attach the wire to the pole and um, mount the, uh, the coupling device here about, about eye level and yeah, and run the counterpoise out to take care of the common mode currents. And it works extremely well, spoken to how well so many countries all over the world with this particular arrangement. But just taking it one step further, what we can do is we can uh, incorporate the same installation as a 40 meter vertical as well, okay? So let's have a bit of a, a look at um, how, we, how we do that. So we simply switch from the 20 metre terminals to a 40 metre terminal at, at the antenna and the transmission line. And we turn this into a, well, I like to think of it as a, a dipole, really, with a vertical and a horizontal component, okay? Now, when we've tuned this particular antenna to the right length for 20 metres, there's no need to retune it again for 40 metres. We just accept it at the particular length that it is for the 20 meter band. In this case, very, very close to 9.8 meters. We run a counterpoise. Well, let's call it a counterpoise or a, a horizontal leg, 40 meter leg, starting length, 10 meters long, okay? So now that we've got this already tuned for the 20 meter band, we don't want to change that. So we leave that the same. And what we do is we make sure that we mount this particular counterpoise or horizontal leg for our 40 meter band at least one meter above the ground. Has to be at least one meter above the ground. It's not really a counterpoise, it's more of a horizontal leg, all right? So in order to tune this, we just tune back on the counterpoise until we get nice, nice low SWR reading. We can use this very, very effectively for the 40 meter band. It's got the vertical element for, for long distance and the horizontal element for short distance. And this, again, a very, very good 40 meter uh, installation. Again, I use this in the park, talk to stations all over Australia, into New Zealand. And when DX is open for 40 meter band, I'm talking into Europe and the UK as well from Australia. So very, very good. Um, very, very good uh, installation. Very, very good compromise between 20 and 40. It's just as, once it's tuned, it's just a simple switch there and a switch here, and you go from one band to the other, and they're already tuned. Only have to ever tune them once. Okay, let's have a bit of a talk about the coupling. The, as I say, the coupling has to be made in such a way that it, um, it matches the very, very high impedance of the NFET, probably in the vicinity of about three and a half K, down to the, the 50 ohms of the transmission line. 
and you need this particular um, match coupling low SWR to get maximum power transfer between your set and your antenna element okay now in the previous videos that I've got up on YouTube I describe how to make this coupler and it, it's made with a single thyroid and to get rid of the um, well inductance of, of the of the thyroid um, one of my previous videos shows a, a means by making up a coax um, sort of a high voltage capacitor and tuning the length of the coax to get to nullify the inductance that's created by the the, the thyroid inside the uh, the coupler and look feel free go and have a look make these particular uh, couplers up they work very very well but here today I'd look, like to talk about an option instead of making a coupler of your own I actually uh, manufacture these particular couplers so let's have a, have a bit of a look at um, at one of the couplers that I manufacture okay here is one of the couplers that I manufacture I make them out of very very strong boxes everything that I use in the in the manufacture of these particular couplers are the best I can get stainless steel screws um, you can have a, a choice of, of UHF connectors for your transmission line or if you want I can uh, install BNC as well very very good strong rugged terminals for the uh, for the counterpoise and for the 20 meter and 40 meter um, connections on the top of them they got great holes um, in the box for mounting and as I say they usually these usually mount onto a, a squid pole or a telescopic uh, sort of fiberglass pole but I've have had lots and lots of people that use these in permanent fixtures at home so they're quite weatherproof and they work very very well okay now people are probably saying oh yeah he's got a coax cable uh, tuned and tucked inside that is not the case these are a completely different design than anything that I've made previously there's no um, capacitive tuning in in them the components that do the coupling inside do the matching are just uh, well as, as, how could I say are solid components that, uh, that require no tuning so there's no tuning element built into this at all it's just a, a perfect match between 50 ohms and about 3,500 ohms. So what I'd like to do now is um, I'd like to just show you one of the bench tests that I do for these particular couplers when I manufacture them. I've just finished this one actually for a customer in Victoria. So I'll slip this on the uh, on the Nano and we'll have a bit of a look at sort of results that, uh, that I get with my, uh, my manufactured couplers. Okay, I've got my, my box set up on my little test resistor here. Um, in order to, to, to make sure that these are, are spot on before I send them out, I test them with a 3.2K uh, resistor between the antenna and the counterpoise to, uh, to emulate the high impedance of the in-fed antenna. So let's have a look at the Nano. I've got it set up here. I hope the light's not glaring on it. But the, uh, the boundaries that I've got are, are between 12 megahertz and 16 megahertz. Um, it's got a, an SWR of 1 is to 1.05 with an impedance, uh, have, have a better look there, 50, 50.5 ohms. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you can see by the nice little green dot right there in the middle of the, uh, of the, the nano um, just how perfect it is. So that's set on 14.2 uh, uh, megs. So... Yep, typically um, these are these are the results that I get with the um, with the um, discrete components that are mounted inside the box. I I say again, there's no tuning that I've done inside the box. It's just built with discrete components. So yeah, again, if you want to have another quick look there, um, they're the results of the um, of the test on the on the coupler. So these particular couplers, um, as I say, I do market them. And they come with a, um, a, a an instruction sheet on how to set them up. I'll, I'll go through that too. Each of my couplers come with full um, instructions on how to set up the antennas. Um, whether you're using a, a telescopic pole or a um, permanent installation, it's completely up to you. Um, tells you how to, 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 to tune the vertical element of it. Then it, it even describes how to make the 
RF choke in your transmission line. Um, yeah, it goes to tuning, how, how to tune it, the vertical, and then how to change over to the 40 meter element and tune the 40 meter element as well. So step-by-step -step in, in instructions that come with the couplers. Okay, so if anybody out there is um, interested in um, inquiring about one of these couplers, um, my details are on the screen. Um, just shoot me an email and I'll fill you in on everything you need to know about getting one of these um, particular items that I make. <laughs> uh, there's not a production line here. <laughs> I, I can put uh, make a, a couple of these or a few a week. The old fingers don't work the best anymore, but uh, I still do a pretty good job. <laughs> so if anybody's interested, give me a call and uh, or shoot me an email and uh, I, I'll, I'll be only too happy to give you the details. This is Alex here, Victor Kilo 2, Papa Radio Charlie in Australia saying 73 and good DXing.